to the fourth position now as pit stops continue. We are 166 laps complete here in Texas. We are back and under caution at Texas. Ward Burton has pounded the wall at turn two. You see the window net is down. That's his signal to the rescue crews that he is okay. Well, the right front of that Dodge is not. No, and you know, I talked to Ward last night and uh, he was concerned about his car for today. He said he didn't think he's gonna be that good. I don't think he was anticipating anything like this. All right, go ahead to look way, way up here. That's where Ward Burton is, all the way up there in turn one. This is looking out of Sterling Marlin's car, the 40 car. There you see it. There's a smoke. Daryl has all the looks of either cutting a right front tire down, maybe run over something, or, or just blew the right front tire out. Awfully early in the run, though, to blow or just to blow a right front. Yeah, just let it ride around there and come to a halt. It's definitely the safest place. Don't come back across the racetrack if you can help it. Ward is okay. There's a bit of fire under hood of that car. And here is Marlin coming to pit lane along with Jeff Green and Mike Skinner who did not pit under the green flag. Terry Labonte's in, Brett Bodine and Matt Kenson. The uh, timing of the caution was a great one for this man, Mike Skinner. He was running in fourth position because he hadn't pitted, and Jimmy Spencer got his lap back along with Jeff Green, who had not pitted. He was sitting there running ninth. So a real break for Jeff Green and Mike Skinner. Yeah, then good for Mike Skinner. He's had a tough year, and uh, Jeff Green in there working on that car. Got it fixed, and he's back in the show. So we're under caution just past halfway in the Samsung Radio Shack 500 in Texas. Be right back. Welcome back to Texas. We're a lap or two from going back to green in the Samsung Radio Shack 500. 178 laps have been completed. Let's have a look back at Saturday's results in the uh, Bush Grand National Race, brought to you on Fox by Old Spice. The rain came. Jeff Purvis had gambled on a two-tire stop, and that proved the difference. He got out of the pits ahead of Jack Sprague. They were unable to restart due to rain. Joe Nemechek finished third. Scott Riggs and Jeff Green bit of controversy in that one again involving Sprague and Spencer in their race to the championship the point leader will be absent next week Jeff Green will be at Martinsburg for the Winston Cup race Sprague Biffle LaJoy and Keller and now the Craftsman Truck Series point standings brought to you by Sears where Ted Musgrave and Robert Presley are tied after two of 22 races Brian Rose David Starr Carlos Contreras the top five Evidently, Greg Simpadelli, Tony Stewart's crew chief, and Tony must have had a little consultation. They decided to come to pit road right here, right there. You'll see a spring rubber. They pulled that spring rubber out of the right front, soften that right front spring. Again, this track's getting tighter and tighter. The softer you run that right front spring, get that rubber out of there, the better the car will turn from the middle off. Yeah, got it. Hey, look at this thing. I mean, it's still burning. Good. That's what's left of uh, Ward Burton's Caterpillar Dodge. As he has brought out this caution flag, we're now at lap 180. The Samsung Radio Shack 500 is brought to you by Radio Shack. Be sure to log on to RadioShack.com or MLB.com to cast your vote for your favorite Major League Baseball All-Star beginning May 1st. And don't forget to watch the 73rd All-Star Game exclusively on Fox. Welcome back to Texas. Mike Joy, Larry McReynolds, Daryl Waltrip. There are older drivers, there are bolder drivers, and there are lots of older, bolder drivers today. Look at that. In six of the top seven positions, there they are. Another fellow at the track uh, had a birthday today, becomes a not-so-young gun. That would be Matt Yoakum. Well, thanks, Mike. Bill Elliott last pitted on lap 156, and his crew chief is Mike Ford. Punching the computer. Mike, you made some significant air pressure adjustments on the last stop. Has it helped to tighten it? Well, without getting any practice for race trim, thought the racetrack could start off a little bit free. And, you know, first run, our car was pretty good, so we knew we were going to have to free it up as the day went. You know, getting to the point and getting a little bit too tight, and we need some significant changes to run with those front few cars. We made them. Car seems pretty good, but expect some more from the Dodge dealers and traffic. How are you doing on fuel mileage today? Well, you know, we compared this to Atlanta, you know, without it having any practice for race conditions, uh, compared it to our Atlanta notes, and we're, we're a little bit off of that. So, uh, you know, everybody's inside their own fuel window right here, and we feel like we'll be all right. 
Bill Elliott on pace to score his first top five this year. And Mike, let me know so in about 30 years when I get my AARP membership, you'll tell me all the benefits that I'll have. You know the best thing about birthdays at this age? <laughs> you keep having them. Yeah, you know what else? You're going to get a spanking from Mrs. Walker, too. <laughs> Daryl, I had nothing to do with it. Uh -huh. Kevin, it was all peer pressure. Yeah, you made explain, me go to your coach. Explain that to her next week. I think you need to explain why Smitty didn't lock the coach. Green, green, green. green. <laughs> <laughs> well, saved by the green flag. 152 laps to go. Buckshot Jones in the 44 car, lap down, trying to get his lap back. He's sitting there in 18th position, 17 cars on the lead lap. When was the last time we got to halfway in a race and had this few cars on a lead lap? It hadn't been wow. any time at Texas, I guarantee you. Looking at Bobby Labonte's car, the 18 car, he's a lap down as well in 19th. We've had two long runs of green flag racing, and that's what's put a number there, of cars still there. down. Still there. Oh, oh, boy, oh. goodbye. Dale Earnhardt Jr. backs it into the fence in turn one. Hard contact. I was just fixing to say that uh, one of the most tense times, here comes Jared. Is he going to give the 44 a break? He raced him all the way back. Buckshot did not get his lap back. Neither did Bobby Labonte or Hunt Strickland. And That's it, a hard hit for Junior. It really was. And I was just fixing to say, it's so tense right now when you're up there, you're lapped down, or you're trying to race with cars that are lapped down. Yeah. He just told the crew chief he's okay. He's going to try to drive it back. Take it out. I don't, I don't think that thing will move. It might. Nine cars again. 49 is in the way, uh, maybe Sounds from the conversation. She was still there because she never gives anybody a break getting in the corner. Yep, like he had trouble with a lapped car. Can you roll it there, DJ? Well, he's going to take a hard hit here in the points. Come in here sixth in points with three consecutive top four finishes the last three races. Well, they can try to straighten that thing out, but they're going to have to put a trunk lid on it because you can't go back on the track without a rear spoiler. And I, I, I may not get to pit road. It ain't going to nope. go. You can't back in the wall here and drive back. <laughs> I don't think. Shut it down. Going down the front stretch into turn one. Connor Robinson down the inside there. Oops. Ooh, and she was pretty well up the racetrack. Yeah. That's unfortunate for DJ. And you know, Daryl, that's what I hate about making a pit stop later on in a caution is, is putting yourself at the back of the pack and giving up that track position and putting you back there where things tend to happen. Hard, man. I wish we didn't, I wish we didn't have that, that sound. Every time I hear that sound, I draw up wait for the hit. Really wants to make you race that truck next weekend. Doesn't <laughs> well, don't say that. <laughs> Get into turn one. Watch at the point of contact here, right there. Yeah. yeah. There's a car being lapped. Here's a car well down near the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah. And look at all the space there between the lap car in the racing lane and the, and the car that's trying to go around on the outside. Yeah. That's a shame. It's a long way from the bottom of the racetrack to the top here. Dale Earnhardt Jr. climbs out of the car. It'll take a minute getting his uh, Hutchins device off. And it looks like he's okay. Hold his arm up there. Samsung Radio Shack 500 on Fox is brought to you by Beachwood Age Budweiser with a crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. Getting set for the restart, lap 191. Four Fords out front. Jarrett, Rudd, Wallace, Bush. Then the Dodge of bull sitter Bill Elliott. Green, green, green. You'll see them come up to speed with Fox Tracks as we go back to green. Race car brought them down at 55 miles an hour. And Buckshot Jones gets his lap back from Dale Jarrett. Up to 150-something miles per hour in the middle of one and two. Still climbing off turn two. 
Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was favoring that left arm as he climbed out of the car. Let's catch up with him, Steve Burns. Thanks, Mike. Dale just come out of the infield care center. Dale, you took an awfully hard hit. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Uh, I stood in the gas and, and kept the car from really shooting up the racetrack and getting it all hard. But once you get turned around here, it's real hard. I mean, you're going to hit the wall. There's no way about, you know, way around that. But it's a shame. We had a good car. Uh, I think Sean might have got into me a little bit. Didn't get down in the corner. Uh, I mean, I was kind of up a little bit. I don't know. I was kind of, I'm just real disappointed, you know. We, she's a... She's a good race car driver, and uh, I, either she, need, either they need to get her in a better race car so she can be more competitive, because she's uh, it, it's hard to it's hard dodging her every 15 laps. Glad you're okay, Dale. Guys also want to pass along. Ward Burton is also inside the infield care center. He's being held for a precautionary X-ray on his neck. He is alert, very. Uh, aware of what's going on. They just want to make sure he's okay after the hard accident that he had in California last year. Thanks, Steve. Brett Bodine has gone to the garage. Ricky Craven screwed up the hill in turn two. Something wrong with his Boy, car. The 43 just took the 40 car to the wall down in turns three and four. Uh, these race cars are treacherous, man. And watch Mark Martin down here. I mean, he's, he gets taken to the wall in turns one and two to go to the other end of the racetrack. Watch this. He just kind of wobbles right there just a little bit, and everybody takes advantage of it. He's got to get out of the throttle. Lost some momentum. Look at all that, all those spots he lost. He just went to the other end down here, and our point leader just about bit the farm. Now, look up here at the front. I think we had a little deal here after that last caution. Buckshot Jones wanted to race Dale Jarrett back to the line. Uh, apparently, Dale didn't give the message, so they said, well, look, on the restart, we'll let you go, but it may cost Jarrett the lead. Yeah, really, I, I think Dale Jarrett said he didn't seem to be clear, quite clear. as good on this restart. Well, what we've heard, though, his car has not been good in traffic. He's been fighting inside, behind Buckshot Jones, and now Rusty clear. Wallace is taking the lead right here. Inside, Dale Jarrett's not inside. done yet. I believe, clear, I think something, clear. Jarrett must have lost a little momentum off the corner over there. Rusty got a run on him. Rusty Wallace now leads for the second time today. And he has not led previously this season. Well, he's got to be he's got to be sitting in there smiling right now because he is running good enough to win, win this race. Wallace led a lap earlier under yellow, so you know I'm not I'm just not so sure that that Dale Jarrett messing around with the 44 car there being a nice guy it didn't cost him a lead. And there's no doubt, guys, this track is changing. We started the race. We documented track temperature was 69 degrees. Even though the sun has not really come out, the track temperature is up to 84 degrees. A little bit of a product, just the cars running around for almost 200 laps. But it will change this racetrack. Ricky Rudd now third. Let's go to his pit. Dick? Now, car number 28. Interesting radio traffic between Ricky Rudd, his spotter, and his crew chief, Michael McSwain. During all that caution time, they were talking about the possibility, the reasonableness of trying the upstairs, trying the top groove. They talked about how smart it would be to give a shot at that once the tires warmed up. We may well see that. As the conversation nearly concluded, McSwain told Rudd, be careful, you've got a top five car. Rudd shot back, it's a top three car. Then he came back and said, we've got a car that can win. That's like on further review and then on second thought. I think it's also, you know, as we've talked throughout the day, it's probably a product of having come here to test two oh, weeks yeah. ago. Well, I'll tell you, we can't count this 97 car out, Kurt Busch, back there in fourth position. He's right there on the tail of these guys, Ricky Rudd and Dale Jarrett, running in fourth spot. Now, let me tell you something that I, that I have noticed through the years, being a driver and watching these guys race. These young guys come on at the end of the day. Their conditioning, their age, all those things are in their favor in these 500-mile races on tracks that are really fast and tough.